Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is just kind of the next part of the recent finds video. I told you my last recent finds, you know, I had quite a bit of stuff come in, so I'm just kind of breaking it up into multiple different videos here. So we'll see if I get through this in one. I might break this into two videos as well, but again, just kind of sharing a bunch of random stuff that's been coming in over the past week or two. Um, had a couple of neat collections that came in at the store and um, a few other things. So, so yeah, it's been a, just a, lot of, a lot of cool stuff that's kind of come in. Uh, a lot of these two will be common, so I won't, you know, go into detail of talking about them because you guys already know I'm kind of inside and out. But I just want to kind of, again, share some of the things that I've picked up and kind of where my collection is going. Uh, and I may be talking a little bit funny now, too. If you see, I'm not opening my mouth as wide and my jaw is a little bit swollen. I had my wisdom teeth pulled. Uh, two days ago, so still kind of going through the healing process and all of that. So if I'm talking a little funny, if you see my jaw looks a little kind of puffy, yeah, that's the reason why. But uh, anyway, kind of dive right into it. Uh, just, I've picked up quite a few cassettes over the past, uh, you know, couple weeks. They had a nice collection that came into the store, but um, this is mainly the ones that I'll show, which is kind of a double cassette, which is Led Zeppelin, the BBC Sessions. Um, really good and I'm not a big fan of a lot of live stuff especially Zeppelin live I just in most cases just doesn't sound very good to me like song remains the same and that type of stuff um, I don't know it's just I'm not as impressed with plant live but this happens to be one actually that I really do like uh, the BBC sessions and uh, you know all, all their you know great hits off here but um probably one of my favorites of the one that initially brought me this album way back when was um uh, the girl i love has long black wavy hair that that one for some reason when i first heard that song many many years ago i just thought it was freaking awesome so very very cool stuff a couple other things that i will show kind of off of the 12 inch side I got this nice little Turtles singles collection, which is eight, I believe. Uh, yeah, eight, seven inch. It just kind of has all the, you know, their singles and stuff on there. You know, Let Me Be, It Ain't Me, Babe, Happy Together, all that great stuff. So just a nice little, little seven inch collection. Kind of get an idea about the track list there. And all you guys have been rambling on and on about this freaking um, uh, uh, Barnes and Noble sale, which for probably five or six days, almost a week, I had no idea about the sales. When I saw all these videos popping up in the VC, I'm like, what are these people talking? Did Barnes and Nobles call everyone in the VC and let them know something except for me? So I did have a chance to sneak over there. <laughs> um, definitely late to the party because you guys had already hit it pretty good. But I did pick up a couple of things that are kind of scattered throughout here. But one of the things that I grabbed was this Beatles set as well. And again, you guys know I'm not a gigantic Beatles fan, but with this being half price and down to about $20, I thought it was kind of a nice little set to pick up, you know, with stuff like Ticket to Ride and Revolution, Hey Jude, Come Together, a few other things there. So that was definitely worth it. Nice another addition to the 45 collection. And now just into a couple of random things. Picked up this nice original pressing of Kiss Animal Eyes. This is, start, this is starting to be one of the things that's um, rubbing off from um, hanging around and talking to Billy Hearst all the time. Is, you know, but Billy is one who's really into pressings and stuff like that, of getting various pressings and things of that nature. And so, you know, you kind of, you know, hang around him. You see him kind of searching for that stuff and you, you know, just kind of see the, the fun and the passion that comes with it. And it just starts to kind of rub off a little bit. So I have all of the Kiss reissues, all of their studio albums, which, is, which are fantastic. But I kind of decided on some specific stuff, I'm going to go back and start, you know, looking for original pressings and, you know, kind of building that side of my collection as well. So Kiss is going to be one of those where I'm going to go and start looking for all, um, you know, excellent to near mint copies of, of original pressings. So Animal Eyes is the first. So quite a few more to go. But so if any of you guys out there have, you know, any of that original KISS stuff, you know, let me know. I'm open for trades and all that good stuff. And I'm doing the same thing with Motley Crue, too. I do have the Journal of the Dams, the box set, which is really nice. But like I said, I'm going to go back now and start 
looking at uh, trying to get the original pressings for a few different things. So here's the first in that line, which is Girls, 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 which as you can see is a beautiful copy of that. All right, the next one here, I believe it was Chris. I'm almost sure it Chris has the spins his, his channel. I could have swore he did a needle drop for this album uh, a little while ago, and I remember hearing he's kind of falling in love with. It. If it was someone else, forgive me, but I, I'm almost sure it was Chris. And um, yes, blues image. This is open. And I just thought it was freaking awesome, and you know. I listened to that needle drop, and then when I was going through some boxes of some new records that that had actually been sitting in the shop for quite some time, it was like a bunch of overstock stuff that's just been sitting and sitting, so it had me kind of go through it. And this popped up, and I was like, bam, there you go, because I've been wanting to get a copy of that. Now, as you can see, it's not in perfect condition, so it is a red sticker. It's going into my find, Finders Keepers, because it's you know not quite in the condition that I would want to put into my collection, but I was like, man, I'm... I have to check this record out. I've been wanting to listen to it and have a copy of it, and the vinyl is in great condition, so this will be a great listening copy until I can find a mint one. But um, yeah, Chris, again, thanks for introducing me to this band because I you know, obviously had never heard of them. And it's just kind of some great, I guess, psychedelic um, type of classic rock type of thing. I don't necessarily know how to describe it except outside of the fact it's just great freaking music. So awesome introduction to that. And when I was going through that same box, as much as I liked that album, when I heard the needle drop, I found a couple others that were in there. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and pick these up too. So here you have Blue's Image. Um, I think it's just kind of self-titled. And this is one that I have listened to all the way through and it's just a you know, fantastic album. This is one of those ones, those albums just kind of reminds you that no matter how much you know, how many records you have, how much music you've listened to, what you've been introduced to, there is just a gazillion different amazing bands and artists that are out there that you'll be lucky to stumble across a small percentage of them, if ever. And this is one of those ones that, yeah, if Chris wouldn't introduce me with the, the album Open, I probably wouldn't have picked this up and just would not have known how amazing an album this is. Just that, again, that fantastic kind of, I'm not going to say low-key psychedelic. It's, it's not like wild and totally out there, but, you know, with the organ solos and everything else. Again, I've only listened to it all the way through one time, but um, I actually listened to Side 2 twice, or Side 1 twice, because I just loved it so much the first time I had to listen to it again. But yeah, fantastic, fantastic album right there. And then one more that was in that batch which was Red, White, and Blues by the same band, Blues Image. So I haven't listened to this one all the way through yet, but um, you know, definitely looking forward to it. And actually probably gonna do that this afternoon. But so it was nice to be introduced to some totally new music there. Uh, just kind of some a core thing I needed to pick up, Jesus and the Mary Chain, uh, Dark Lands. I believe this is their second album from 87, but um, Again, just another another great 80s alternative piece. Uh, hold off on that one. Another one I've been waiting for for a while. And I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, Roixop or whatever, I don't know. I've actually, I never thought about actually investigating to pronounce it correctly. But uh, this is Melody AM. Kind of a, I guess, electronic type of band or whatever. Uh, most people will probably know them more so, and this is how I discovered them, is if you remember the Geico commercials with the, the caveman, that little poppy kind of a electronic song they played in the background. Um, it's the song Remind Me, which from the first time I heard that commercial, I fell in love with that song. I thought it was the coolest thing in the world. And I used to just love when that commercial came on because I, I love listening to the song. Well, also nice just to kind of discover that it had been pressed on vinyl and um, this is, I don't think, I don't think there was a U.S. pressing. I think it's only U.K. pressings, I think. But, um, yeah, so finally had a chance to pick up a very nice copy of that. Nice 2LP set, which is really cool. And, it, and again, it has that, my favorite song on there is uh, Remind Me. Is it? Um, yeah. And one more here, which is kind of a new introduction. 
uh, Diana, you know, uh, digging in the crate. Uh, I forget what country she's from. She has a really, really cool accent. I love listening to her do her, uh, her videos. But she did a video recently, and one of the great things she does is she's always has a lot of obscure, I shouldn't say obscure, but just a lot of like, you know, fusion jazz and just all this type of stuff. Like, you know, her, she really can introduce you to a lot of music that sometimes didn't come your way. And she showed this one the other day, and I had, or a couple weeks ago, and I had been basically losing my mind trying to find copies of them. Um, there's actually two albums. I think this is the one that she showed, and it's Muriel uh, Grossman, and it says Reverence. And I guess this is kind of on a smaller label, um, that R.R. Gems label, and uh, it's a 2019 pressing. You know, it came out on their website, sold out really quick and all that, so it's kind of hard to get a hold of them. But I was able to get one of these on on a Discogs. But the one that I really want is, um, uh, what's that other one? Uh, oh, God, I'm going brain dead now. Golden Age. I said, it'll come to me in a minute. But anyway, um, so yeah, I was able to find this one on Amazon, which was really nice. But yeah, Muriel Grossman is freaking awesome. From the moment she did that meat and needle drop, I was emailing her trying to figure out where I could get a copy of that. Uh, probably bugging her to some degree because I wanted one, and and especially the other album. You know, the the title upset my mind, but she is fantastic. Oh my gosh, the best way I can describe this <clears throat> is that it can almost make you believe in reincarnation. In that somehow. John Coltrane passed away and came back as a white woman. I mean, that's it. That's basically the best way to describe this album. It has so much Coltrane flavor in it up and down that it is unbelievable. I swear you could put it on and trick any Coltrane fan into thinking this was a John Coltrane album. Uh, just absolutely amazing. Matter of fact, I think it was a uh, side three, I believe. There's two songs on there called Chase and, and Triba, and, I, and again, when you put on Chase, it sounds like a continuation of Psalms off of John Coltrane's Love Supreme, and Triba, if I'm if I'm remembering the track order right, because I only listened to it twice, but if I remember the track order right, Triba is almost like a a continuation of um, favorite things. I mean, it's just the way she plays, the sound of her sax and everything else. If you are a John Coltrane fan, you have to get some of her stuff in your collection. So fantastic pickup there. Great new artist. And again, Diana, thanks for introducing me to her. And I can't wait to get the other one, which I believe was Golden Age, I think is the name of it. But um, anyway, moving right along. Probably some of the more common stuff here. I picked up a copy of the Record Store Day release of um, The Runaways Live in Japan. You guys know that one. A music on vinyl pressing of uh, Branford Marcel's quartet. Uh, this is a, it's called Performs Cold Trains of Love Supreme Live in Amsterdam. I saw this, this concert on YouTube and I mean, guys were just killing it. So, you know, just stumbled across this the other day and discovered it actually been pressed on vinyl and music on vinyl pressing nonetheless. So I was very pumped about that. But yeah, I mean, they, Coltrane would be proud of what they did in terms of, of doing a tribute towards, you know, a Love Supreme. So fantastic jazz album right there. And my girl, Queen of the Honky Tonk. <laughs> um... Oh, Queen of Honky Tonk Street, I'm sorry. Kitty Wells. I don't know how I fell in love with her, um, but yeah, when it comes to just that old school honky tonk kind of kind of country music, I love Kitty Wells to death. I think it was that song, uh, Each Day I Cry a Little, was the first song that really kind of, I think it's Each Day or is it Each Day I Cry a Little. But uh, I heard that song once and for whatever reason, it just made me fall in love with her. And ever since then, I love grabbing her stuff when I find it in, in great condition. So this is a really nice pickup there to add to the, the country section. Now when um, Mitch and Billy Hurst and I, when we went digging a couple weekends ago, we went to a record show, hit a, another store, and then I was pretty much kind of, you know, 
spent what I was planning on spending that day, and that was kind of that. We went to one last store, and you know, Billy finds this awesome country section. He's digging through and just pulling out all kinds of stuff. So Mitch and I are just kind of browsing around, and I happen to stumble across this, and um, which was really, really cool because I had been, number one, wanting this to be reissued, or issued, I should say, on vinyl for the first time for so long, and a year or two ago it was, but when it came out, it was like 60 bucks, 50 or $60, and I was like, I'm not paying that much for it. But uh, yeah, I stumbled across this fantastic used copy in mint condition that day, and so I was able to finally pick this up and get it in my collection. Uh, Neil Lofgren's Acoustic Live, just an amazing album, whether you have it on vinyl or CD, it's just a, a fantastic album to have. This is one of those albums where I say, you know, if someone comes in and it's just like, oh, let me hear what your stereo sounds like. Let me, you know, what's what's so fantastic about vinyl to you? And this is one of the albums that I would pull out and put on. Um, and mainly the song, uh, Keith Don't Go. I mean, it's just a fantastic acoustic piece that, that really shows Neil's skills. I mean, geez, that guy can freaking play. But yeah, fantastic, almost grail level find for me right there. So great addition to the collection. Now again, just kind of running through some stuff a little quicker here. Um, Lenny Kravitz Five, not one of his bigger, more well-known albums, but you know it had songs like Black Velveteen and a couple other things that were, I guess, kind of a little more popular, but still, um, again, part of the advantage of working at the record store with the credit is being able to pick up some of these reissues that I just normally wouldn't buy, and this is one because I do love Lenny, but I wouldn't pay, you know, thirty-four dollars for that album. <laughs> and the same thing here with uh, Circles. Another great pickup there. Um, what was a big hit off of this album? Or the more well-known hit? Can't Get You Off My Mind is probably the, the bigger hit off of this one. But again, another great addition to the Lenny Collection. And then one of the pieces that I did pick up at the Barnes & Noble sales after I actually heard about it, again, was um, Lenny. Praise Vibrations. Haven't heard this yet. I mean, it, it only ended up being $11, so I thought it'd be a good pickup. But, you know, this is one album I haven't really dove into yet. But as much as I love Lenny Kravitz, I'm sure it'll be be another fantastic piece, but we'll see. Also picked up Medusa from the Barnes and Nob Nobles by Annie Lennox. Really glad I waited on this one, too, because I've been debating about buying this for quite some time. and just wasn't really willing to spend 20 bucks on it. But um, yeah, so I'm glad it was one of the marked down albums and you know, $9.99, I'm more than happy to pay for it. So again, fantastic album, you know, No More I Love Use, definitely probably the biggest hit off of this album and you know, we always gotta love Annie. Another one I held off of on buying for quite some time, so it worked out well with this 50% sale, which was Sting. Again, 11 bucks is a lot more reasonable. Um, you know, 10 cents. Ten Summers Tales, great Sting album actually. I mean, it, it's one of my favorite of his latter stuff. You know, if I ever lose my faith in you, which is okay, but I mean, Feels of Gold is definitely my favorite song off of here. But the one thing I was most impressed about was the sound quality of this pressing. I mean, it just sounded absolutely fantastic. Is just sometimes you put on a record and it, it just sounds even better than you expect. You know, and this was one that really kind of did that. So. Amazing job on the pressing with that album. And a little Yo-Yo Ma. Um, Sing Me Home. A lot of various stuff, a few different cameos of different people on this album. But it's kind of hard to describe, but just a, a lot of nice various things. And I, I do love do love me some Yo-Yo Ma, for sure. Was willing to take a chance on this one as it was marked down to only $8.00. Uh, this is Europe, War of Kings, and actually the, I've only listened to like three or four songs on the first side, um, and it's it's actually not too bad, so I mean, I'll, maybe I'll talk about it a little bit more in a later video after I really go through and kind of absorb it, but um, yeah, it's definitely a, a great album, it doesn't necessarily carry the old Europe sound, uh, it's definitely, I guess, a little more mature, if you will, but um, yeah, it's 
so, so what I heard so far has been pretty good, and it was definitely worth the, the blind buy. And a little Enya. You know, I'm always working on completing that collection. <laughs> this is Dark Sky Island. Not my favorite album by her, but still, you know, definitely great stuff. But uh, yeah, just another nice addition to the Enya collection. And again, with the 50% off, great opportunity to do that. For any Hughes ex Except fans that didn't know, this is, had been recently reissued. This is Except Predator. Uh, this is from 1996, I believe. But um, yeah, music on vinyl pressing, which is awesome. Um, it's on clear vinyl, which, okay. But yeah, just like a lot of the, the latter Except stuff, I mean, this is one of those albums that maybe didn't get as much notice or whatever, but just, I mean, a good, solid, heavy you know, that, that accept type of metal. Um, so yeah, if you're not familiar with this album, I highly recommend checking it out because this is a, a fantastic album that just was not high on the radar. And the other thing I'm doing too is I'm completing a Pink Floyd box set that I'm putting together. And the, the box set is, is, com is comprised of the new Pink Floyd reissues. So starting here with um, Clouds, or it's a cloud, it's obscured by clouds, but I like to call it the clouds. Obscured by clouds, again, a pink foot classic you guys know about from 1992, I believe. And then more, just it's kind of a soundtrack or whatever, but another nice addition. And then I picked up a copy of the demos. Haven't listened to this one all the way through yet. Uh, so this is one of the ones that I just wasn't quite familiar with, but went ahead and picked that up as well as two of the more popular ones which is metal and you guys of course know all about that one as well as a magma I guess I can never pronounce that right <laughs> but uh, yeah this is also one of the the reissues there so my, my Pink Floyd reissue box set is complete um, which is kind of nice. And maybe I'll share that with you as soon as I get that kind of done as well. You guys know how I like making those box sets and everything. Uh, another great pickup here. Oops, I'm sure a lot of you guys have had this album forever, but I finally got a chance to pick it up, which is Jason uh, Isbell, Southeastern. Another, again, another fantastic album. I know Noble Records was just talking about this. Uh, this is one of the picks that he had in his, his new... 7,000 subs contest. He was talking about that album. And another one, I th I think this was, I think Diana, again, was the one that introduced me to this one. I think she was the one that talked about it in the video. But it's um, Ghost Funk Orchestra, a song for Paul. And I think really kind of that sticker really s sums it up. Mysterious groove based psych, and that's really kind of exactly what it is. But uh, this was a really cool record, and again, heard it, some needle drop there, and so had to kind of throw it on and loved it, and so picked up a nice copy of that as well. But another nice addition to the psych collection. Picked up this reissue of Bad Company, self titled. Definitely my favorite Bad Company album. I think this is probably one of the most perfect, just straight up classic slash hard rock albums. Um, so this is one I'm actually looking to collect. Uh, so I'm usually not one that does a bunch of stuff with multiple pressings. Uh, I'm starting to kind of get back into it with some stuff like I mentioned before, but especially on, on the Bad Company for just for whatever reason, I want to kind of grab every pressing I can get of this particular album because it's just that fantastic. So, um, so yeah, this was a, a just a 180 gram reissue. Sounds fantastic, that's for sure. But yeah, just a fantastic album. I think one one of the ultimate rock rock albums. And sticking on the bad company, got this one here. What's the title of this album again? I'm going brain dead. Oh, burning sky. Sorry. Got so much stuff jumbling around in my head. But uh, Burning Sky, another 
great piece that I needed for my Bad Company collection, so good pick up there. And I'm also, just like I was working on the the um, Pink Floyd collection, I'm also working on a U2 box set as well. So again, kind of trying to take advantage of the store credit and picking up some of these things that I normally wouldn't just go out and buy. But uh, U2's Europa. I mean, again, it's decent album by them. You know, um, I don't know, I mean, Lemon's probably my favorite song off of here. But yeah, it's definitely be kind of fun to complete that set as well. And let's see, the last three pieces, which I'll flash here really quick, with the more Ohio players. And this is try a little, or just tenderness, not try a little tenderness, it's just called tenderness. And you know, all the Ohio, play, Ohio player stuff is always difficult to find in great condition. So I think I picked this up at the record show that day when we all went out. Uh, 1981, some of their later stuff, not quite as funky as their earlier stuff. They actually did a cover of uh, Try a Little Tenderness on here, which I, I don't really like that. It's like something is that perfect, just kind of don't mess with it. But the rest of the album actually is not too bad. Again, it's just kind of some of their, their more late 70s, early 80s type of funky stuff, and it's, it's the Ohio players. So anytime you got sugar out front, you know something good's going to happen. Uh, I believe it was pronounced Clanad. Am I pronouncing that rice? Two. I believe this is their second release from 1974. Something like that. Yeah, 1974, I believe. Um, just kind of a, a nice mixture between kind of a a folk slash, I guess, kind of Irish type of type of thing. Um, really cool album. They they have they have a lot more stuff out than I was aware of. Uh, I'd heard the first album and heard this one before, but then I also noticed there was a new music on vinyl press and it came out of something they've kind of recently done. And just after you know researching it a bit, they have a ton of different stuff out there. But again, if you kind of like that that folkish you know Irish type of feel, this is definitely a great great album to check out. And last but not least, looks like I did get to the entire box. This is Betty Wright live. Kind of a neat little album here. I'm not sure if people might be very familiar with this, but just some good, you know, 70s R&B, you know, nice little live set. Um, just kind of one of those great albums just to kind of put on the background when you're moving around the house doing stuff because it definitely has a, a nice live feel, a good soul feel, a lot of audience participation stuff in it. So uh, just a, a cool little album to add to the R&B collection there. But, okay, wow, so I did get through it all. There you go. Um, those are, again, kind of some of the, the new additions over the past few weeks. But, um, yeah, I have 28 minutes, so I'm going to get off of here. Let me know what you guys think. I will be back to do, I keep saying, and I've been working on it, my 2020 tag. I almost have answers for everything. And then also uh, Dylan Noble Records. He has a new uh, contest video that's up. at 7,000 subs. Of course, I'm going to jump on board because that's just some awesome questions he has there as well. So, yeah. Um, We'll definitely be back in the near future to do those, do those videos. So I hope it didn't sound too funny with my jaws and everything. But uh, thanks for watching, VC. And as always, we will talk to you soon.